super jazz that we're here at IS Kids Online together. I was tapping out some new beats in my sleep. That's how excited I am to be here with you. We have a jam-packed day planned as we continue to talk about cooperation. Let's read what cooperation is all about and then we'll have a three second air guitar jam session. Here we go. Cooperation is working together to do more than you can do alone. I as kids, you guys are awesome. Do you know that? I want to see more of your awesomeness through some photos of you. Please send us a photo of you watching our video to our WhatsApp number below. Alright, we're going to learn about cooperation more in our Bible story. But first, we will worship the Lord together. Let's stand up and sing together. Hi everyone, I've got a question for you before we get started with our story. Have you ever had to stay home from school because you were sick? 
If you have, raise your hand. Then I believe that you know really well of how bad that feeling was, right? Being sick is no fun. I'm so glad that we have doctors and nurses who can help us when we are sick. They can run tests and give us medicine to help us feel better. But during the time of Jesus, things were a lot different. Most people would have to walk miles and miles away to see a doctor. And then sometimes the doctor didn't even know how to help them. When Jesus began to teach and heal people, things changed. Suddenly, there was someone who could really help people who were sick and hurting. Today, I want to look at the story of someone who needed help. This man couldn't walk. When Jesus showed up in town, this man desperately hoped that he could see Jesus for himself. Jesus had been traveling with his followers, teaching and healing people along the way. Now Jesus had made his way to the town of Capernaum. Crowds of people came to hear what Jesus had to say. They hoped Jesus might heal them. In the crowd, there were Pharisees. Pharisees were the religious leaders and teachers of Jesus' day. The Pharisees were looking for a way to trick Jesus and get him in trouble because they didn't like him. As the Pharisees were listening to Jesus teach, what do you think they looked like? They probably made grumpy faces and crossed their arms. Listen to what happened next. Some men came carrying a man who could not walk. He was lying on a mat. They tried to take him into the house to place him in front of Jesus. This man had a few friends who had heard about Jesus. They knew that Jesus could heal sick people and they thought maybe Jesus would help their friend. So they carried their friend on a mat to see Jesus. Unfortunately, there was a problem. When these friends got to the house, there were so many people that they couldn't get the man to Jesus. The friends would have given up and gone back home. It would have been easy for them to get discouraged and quit. But these friends saw a need and were determined to help. The crowd was listening intently. Then suddenly those friends did this. They went up on the roof. Then they lowered the man on his mat through the opening on the roof tiles. They lowered him into the middle of the crowd, right in front of Jesus. Jesus was impressed with what this man had done for their friend. When Jesus saw that they had faith, he spoke to the man. He said, friend, your sins are forgiven. Isn't that incredible? Jesus forgave the man of all his sins everything he had ever done wrong. Some of the people in the crowd were amazed, but the Pharisees weren't happy at all. Let's do another grumpy Pharisee faces again. Then the Pharisees thought to themselves, who can forgive sins but God alone? They didn't think that Jesus was really the son of God. Jesus knew what the Pharisees were thinking. He said to them, why are you thinking these things in your hearts? Is it easier to say your sins are forgiven or to say get up and walk? But I want you to know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. Jesus was pointing out to the Pharisees that anyone can say your sins are forgiven. There would be no proof if it actually happened or not, right? Forgiveness isn't something you can see with your eyes. So Jesus would give the crowd something they could see by healing the man. And if Jesus could heal this man, he also had the power to forgive sins. Jesus turned to the man and said, I tell you, get up, take your mat and go home. The man stood up, he picked up his mat and he went home, praising God all the way. Through the power of God and with the help of a few friends, the man who couldn't walk was healed. Praise the Lord. Jesus had shown everyone that he really is the son of God. The man who couldn't walk needed help to get to Jesus and his friends did everything they possibly could to make it happen. As follower of Jesus, we could 
treat others the way we want to be treated. And that's exactly what this man's friends did. They saw someone in need and they worked together to do something to help. That's something we can do too. Here is our bottom line for this week. We can work together to help someone in need. Let us pray and ask God to help us do that. God, it's amazing to see how these men helped their friend. They knew that Jesus had the power to heal, and they worked together to make sure their friend had the chance to get to Jesus. Please show us how we can cooperate like they did. Give us wisdom to see what people around us need, and show us how we can work together to make things better. We love you, and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. It's pop quiz time! I'll ask you some questions and you can shout out loud the correct answer based on the Bible story you just heard. Are you ready? Question number one. Who was carried on a mat to meet Jesus? Was it a man who couldn't walk? Was it a man who couldn't talk? Or was it a man who couldn't hear? A man who couldn't walk was the one being carried on a mat to meet Jesus. Did you get that one right? Question number two. When they couldn't get inside the crowded house, what did the carriers do? Did they cry loudly and go home? Did they get angry and push people aside? Or did they climb the house and lower down their friends to meet Jesus? I hope you got this one right. When they couldn't get inside the crowded house, the carriers climbed the house and lowered their friend to meet Jesus. Last question. What did Jesus say to the sick man? Did he say, sit up, throw your mat, and don't come back? Did he say, push up, tear your mat, and stay here? Or did he say, get up, take your mat, and go home? Oof, this one was a bit tricky. Jesus said to the sick man, get up, take your mat and go home and the man was healed nice one friends thanks for playing pop quiz with me hi IS kids it's teacher Hesty it's so great to see you again let's read the memory verse together two people are better than one they can help each other in everything they do Ecclesiastes 4 verse 9. Let's read it one more time. Two people are better than one. They can help each other in everything they do. Ecclesiastes 4 verse 9. There are a lot of things you can do on your own. Independence is a great skill to grow into. But sometimes we need the help of others. Hmm. When was the last time you need someone else's help? Who was it that helped you? Do you remember? Let's think about it throughout the week. You know, the person that helped you didn't always know how to help others. They had to learn it. And they probably learned it from someone who helped them too. So, they learned how to help and now they help others. You can learn how to help someone too. You can learn how to see someone else's need and then help them. Let's find a way to work together and help someone in need. All right, kids, all the best to you. God bless you. So good to be back at our game time. Today we will play a game called that or wow. The game is simple. There will be some questions with two options. Wait, that's more. Two options that I would like you to answer based on your own preferences, right? If you choose the option on the blue side, do the dab. And if you choose the one on the orange side, do this wow pose, wow. Remember, blue is that and orange is wow. Are you ready? Let's do it. Question number one. If you have to drink this when you just woke up early in the morning, which one will you choose? Orange juice or 
hot chocolate. Dab or wow? Wow, that was a tough one, but I think I prefer like what I just said just now. Wow, hot chocolate. Question number two. You need to study for your test tomorrow, but your house is in a chaotic situation. Your dad's friends were visiting and they were super loud. There is a table and chair outside in your backyard, but your mom forgot to throw the trash. It was super stinky outside. Do you prefer to study outside or inside? I'll give you time to think. That or wow? Well, I think for this one, for me personally, I will choose wow again. I prefer to deal with noise rather than bad smell. Ew. <laughs> All right, question number three. You are trapped in a room for two days and you can only choose one out of two activities to accompany you in that room. Will you pick reading or music? Dab or wow? This one is easy for me. I will do the dab because I choose the blue side. Reading. Question number four. You can only pick one dinner for the rest of your life. Sweet spaghetti or salty spaghetti? Which one will you choose? I think for me, I will go with the dab again this time. Sweet spaghetti sounds so sweet and bearable, right? Question number five. If you ask to choose between sunny days and rainy days for the whole month, non-stop every day, which one would you choose? I will go for the dab again this time. Come on, a whole month of rain? Jakarta will be drowned. Number six. Aha, uh -huh. I think I know what most of you will choose this time. You are stranded in an island for a week. Fortunately, the island has lots of food and electricity. For your entertainment, you can only choose between having a TV or a video game. What will you pick? Kids, you and I are the same. I will do the wow because wow, a whole week of playing video games all by yourself in an island while waiting for people to rescue you? That sounds so perfect for me, right? Question number seven. Let's make this one question quick. Soccer or basketball, kids? Which one? I picked the dab because yeah, soccer, kicking a ball is fun for me. Number eight, and this is gonna be the last one. If you can only have one kind of pet for the rest of your life, do you prefer to have dogs or cats? No sweat for me, I pick the dab because yes, I am a dog lover. Oh, that was a really fun game, right? Looking forward to do another game with you next month, kids. See ya. There was a lot involved in getting this friend to see Jesus. These four people could have just waited and hoped for Jesus to come to their friend or even just told their friend about Jesus without physically taking him there. They could have given up and decided to just have lunch along the way. But these friends committed to work together to help someone in need. The only person who could help their friend was Jesus. And they stopped at nothing to get him to Jesus. We all know things we can do by ourselves to help others. But what could we do to work together to help someone in need? We can throw a party for someone who needs cheering up. We can clean a yard for an elderly person. Or maybe form a buddy club for a lonely kid at school. Help our busy mom by cooking a meal. Start an online prayer group raise money together to sponsor a child, and many more. Whether you see a need around you or gather resources to help, or someone asks you to help another friend, you're showing how to work together to help someone in need. Let's do it together, IES kids! Hi, IS kids and parents. 
Easter is coming and we have something special for you and your family to do at home. For those of you who live in Java and Bali, we will have an Easter package sent to your place. And what's inside it? Devotional cards for the whole family to do starting Palm Sunday until Easter Sunday. And we also have some activities for the younger kids. So what do you need to do to get a package? First, register your family by scanning this QR code or go to this website below and register by Monday, April 4 to get your box. We will send one package per family before Palm Sunday. And second, do the daily devotions with your family. And don't forget to look for the object connected to the daily theme. And last, but certainly not least, pray together with your family after doing these devotions. I pray that you will have a great time in welcoming Easter with your family. So don't forget to register by Monday, April 4. See you all! We're